Welcome back. It's the Flow Sports Hour on Flow FM. 2024 marks 10 years since a very famous Wedderburn Redbacks premiership in the North Central Footy League. And here to reminisce on a blast from the past and share some stories from that team is premiership player Sam Barnes. Sam, great to have you here 10 years on from that premiership. Thanks for having me, Dan. My pleasure. My pleasure indeed. Now, first things first, what do you remember from that premiership 10 years later? It was a nail-biting game, one-point win, and the game actually went into extra time. So, yeah, just talk us through some of your memories now that a decade's passed. I'm sure it hasn't felt like a decade, though. No, it hasn't. Time flies as you get a little bit older, but um, probably the main memories from the game was we were just really relieved when the final siren went because we were probably the dominant team throughout the year and that era a little bit too, and... We had a bit of a habit of making close grand finals where they shouldn't have been, but um, Charlton were a very good side. and Yeah, it was sort of neck and neck all day, and then it went into overtime as well, and we are lucky enough to kick a point where we maybe could have got a goal, and then I think Charlton kicked out and had a good run of possessions towards their forward line, and one of our players along the half-back line took an intercept mark, and luckily the siren went with the ball in our hands, and we sort of stopped their thrust forward, and... Yeah, I think the feeling was more relief than the excitement because, as I said, we're pretty dominant throughout that era. And, yeah, we probably should have won by a little bit more, but we can't take away the effort from the other team on that day too because they played fantastic. You've got to have a little bit of sympathy for Charlton. You beat them by uh, a point in that one. You beat them by two goals in the 2013 grand final. And then in the 2015 grand final, it was Charlton going down to St Arnold by eight points and they finally got one of their own in 2016 by just seven points. So a bit of a weird time for Charlton indeed. L- luckily, they did get one in the end there. But back to uh, your mob, Wedderburn, the other significant thing about this grand final is not only was it won by a point in extra time, which is as thrilling as it gets, but it marked the fourth consecutive premiership for the Redbacks in uh, in, in what was unprecedented in this league. No one else has won four in a row. What was it like to be the first team to accomplish that? Um, yeah, it was fantastic, actually. We probably had a really good core group of players that were in the team for all those four years and that were all pretty high achievers and expected pretty high standards out of each other and ourselves. So I think it was not something we spoke about a lot, but I think it was something that we all hoped to achieve as a group was to probably get that four in a row in a way and... Once we got that, the next year was probably that's when we had a bit of a turnover of players. So it was sort of like we probably achieved what we wanted to and then people sort of life takes you in other directions and the team disbanded a little bit after that. But, yeah, like I said, it was great to sort of have probably 10 or 12 players that were there throughout it all and we had a nice um, influx of fresh faces throughout the way. So it was really good to sort of celebrate that milestone with 10 or 12 really good friends that were there from start to finish with it. What are some of the lasting memories from yourself personally from the 2014 Grand Final? Was there a, a particular goal that you kicked or, or a, a belter of a quarter that you played that you look back on with a lot of pride? Or is there any one thing that really stands out? Um, personally, the Grand Final I actually kicked my 100th for the year. I was full forward. So that was a pretty good little moment. And I remember I was carrying a hamstring injury through the final series, so I was sort of hobbling around a little bit and I was lucky to knock that on the head early in the first quarter, I think, but there was very little fanfare because of a bigger fish to fry, I guess. So that was probably something that stuck out for me personally, but also a bit of regret that probably I only kicked two for the day and they were both in the first quarter, so I feel like I probably underperformed in the grand scheme of the grand final when I needed to, but it was nice to sort of reach that personal milestone as well. Absolutely. That's a fantastic milestone. Did you ever kick 100 in a season in, in any other season or was that the only time? Um, one of the other years throughout those flags I did as well, but I was pretty injury prone as well. So I probably could have got there a few more times, but spent a lot of time watching, unfortunately. But luckily enough, we always had someone that could sort of go to full forward and because the team was pretty dominant. They always seemed to be able to fill their boots as well. So I guess I was just the reciprocant of being in a good team. Well, spent a bit of time on the sidelines injured, but spent plenty of time putting him through the big sticks as well. No doubt about that. So that's fantastic to bring up a hundred goals in a grand final. That is just unbelievable stuff. And 
Uh, like you said, not much fanfare. I assume no one was uh, storming the field and, and getting around you like we've seen with uh, Buddy Franklin in the AFL and a few others. No, not not close. I think maybe one one of my mates from the forward pocket might have ran out and realised he was on his own, and that might have been about <laughs> it. So, as I said, there was probably not the right time or place considering the the grand scheme of what was going on, which was fine. Had a had a bigger job to try and get done, which we just slipped over the line, which is great. Yeah, well, it certainly shows uh, exactly where the team's priorities were in focusing on winning that grand final. And looking at the four grand finals that you did win all in a row. 2011, it was a nine-point victory. 2012, it was a one-point victory. 2013, 12 points. 2014, one point. So every single one of those grand finals was extremely close. Is there anything about that group that just knew how to win those close games? Do you think there was something special brewing there in those tight moments? Um, Yeah, certainly. I think we had a lot of experience in the team sort of across every line where we had leaders and we're a very vocal group with each other too. So sometimes that could turn into a little bit of um, not bickering, but just people don't like being told things sometimes, but everyone sort of knew if they were told, they might bite back at the time, but they knew it was for the greater good of the team. And I think, yeah, we just expected big things from each other. But at the same time as well, we're probably pretty dominant throughout all those years as well and the grand finals probably don't quite reflect how strong we were they were probably the games that we didn't perform our best in which is a bit of a shame considering the class we had in the team so looking back I would have liked to have won those by a lot more to put a bit of an exclamation mark on how good our seasons were so it probably doesn't quite show off how dominant we were throughout those years but it's also probably a good thing for the league as well you don't like seeing teams just go through the year easily and then just make the final series a little bit one-sided. So it's good for the crowds and also good for those teams. As you said, Charlton sort of were up there for three or four years before they finally won one. So it was good that they just kept at it and finally got rewarded for the effort they put in as well. So I think it was good all around. But yeah, as I said, I'd probably like to have won those a little bit more and probably enjoyed the the feeling out on the ground of coming close. being able to relax in the last quarter and soak it up a little bit, but instead we had to just pull our socks up and make sure we're on the winning side and not the losing side at the end of the day. But that probably does speak volumes about the players we had in the team that just refused to lie down and kept going until the final siren. And it's been 10 years now. Are you still involved at the footy club at all? Um, There are still two or three players still playing. And I was coaching for the last three years, and this year I've stepped away from that. And they've got a got a new coach taking on this year, which will be great for the club and a bit of fresh blood and some new ideas and fresh faces. So it's a bit of a bit of a new year for the club, which will be great. But yeah, there are still two players, and they're on 37. I think one of them's 40 and possibly 39 this year. So they're sort of evergreen players and the heart and soul of the club. So it's great to see them still playing as well. Fantastic! It certainly is, and. Would you say you have a favourite of the four premierships? Obviously, I think for most people, the first one's always the sweetest, but winning the fourth in a row and being the first club to do that and winning it by a point in extra time as well, that must have been really special. Yeah, it was, but I think it's pretty easy to go with what you just suggested. The first one probably feels like you climb the mountain for the first time and achieve the impossible a little bit, and we played Witchy Proof that year, and they were... They were probably the favourites all year, so we had to really earn that one, and they probably had the wood over us all year throughout the season. And then we managed, I think we might have beaten them in a thriller in the qualifying final, which gave us a bit of confidence. And then we were able to beat them in the grand final too, which we're actually, I think we're up by about 40-odd points at half-time against them and then just stopped and managed to just hang on as well. They came home with a flurry of goals as well. So um, that first one's definitely probably the one that's, was the most satisfying, I think. And, yeah, had a, having a group that was sort of knocking on the door for a few years before then, it was really good to get get the desserts we probably deserved. And are you aware of any uh, sort of generational connections now? Of course, it's been 10 years since that 2014 flag. No doubt some of the guys that played in that team or even back in the 2011 flag uh, at the start of those four in a row, no doubt some of those players had some kids who were probably coming up through... Uh, the junior ranks now? Um, yeah, it was probably more the, the committee members that have the kids that are playing through now. So the blokes that behind the scenes and 
keep the club running day to day. They're the ones and all their kids are probably four or five and now they're early 20s and making their own mark on the club. So they're probably the ones that stand out. There's, it's a small farming town, so there's a lot of players with the same last names that are cousins and brothers. So it's really good to see that that local base and all families connected like Holtz and Lockhart. They're sort of the names of the town that there's lots of their children playing. So it's really good for those those blokes behind the scenes at that time to now see their their kids coming through and doing a really good job too. And they're going to be all pretty fine young players, I think. Most definitely. It's one of the great things about country sport, if you ask me, is those family connections that keep going from one generation to the next. And do you know of any players from uh, any of those old premiership teams? Has anyone gone on to play uh, AFL or, or VFL, SANFL, anything like that? Um, probably not going on to the higher leagues, if anything. We probably had players that had come back from that higher standard of footy. Oh, okay. So that was probably a big reason why we ended up having such a good run as well, I'd say, is a lot of the players having played in the higher leagues or even state-level footy, and we had a lot of players play in the, the Vic Country squad throughout those years as well. So I think, yeah, it was more the mature-age mature, mature age guys that had played better footy, whereas we only had a, probably a handful of young blokes that sort of came in and we blooded throughout those years, but some of them did come into the Bendigo League, which is the closest sort of major league to us and have had sort of semi-reasonable seasons in there, but some of them got struck down by injuries too, which is a little bit sad. But um, one that actually did go on a state league footy was Geordie Hargraves, and he's still playing at the club now. He's a, a ruckman that's very handy, and he's won a league medal too, so he's probably the standout out of those guys. Now, going on to the 10-year reunion this year, are there any official reunion plans? Um, not as yet. We usually... Once the season rolls around, the wheels start to get into motion for that. But it was Luke Rose's first year of coaching, so we had a new coach that year, and he's a very social being, so I'm sure he'll have something pretty exciting to look forward to. But it's, yeah, as we've had four in a row, so we've sort of done, try to do something different each year, but it's always good as long as you've got a game of footy to watch and a few beers, and you're seeing people come back from all over Australia. Life takes you in different directions, so it's just good to catch up with everyone in the same spot and then see all the blokes that were behind the scenes as well, just as much as the players. So it's a whole sort of town involvement, which is great. Definitely a good way to celebrate. And going on to the fourth Premiership reunion year in a row, you're not getting sick of them, are you? Uh, not at all. I don't think you ever get sick of them. I'm sure there's plenty of listeners out there that have probably played in losing grand finals and you, it's a bit of a bit of uh, pill to swallow sometimes. You never celebrate the losing one, so it's good to actually have a reason to get together and celebrate and as sort of middle-aged males you don't really get to see a lot of your friends a lot of the time unless something big's organized so it's just a good excuse to see people you haven't seen for a long time we've got something in common that'll be with us for life so yeah you ne never knock back a reunion i don't think sensational and you mentioned the coach is a bit of a social being and he'll be uh, enjoying the reunion was he one of the catalysts for the uh, post premiership footy trips back in the day um I wouldn't say the footy trips, but definitely we used to have pretty good celebrations directly after the grand finals, and I remember that pretty vividly. We had a bit of a bus crawl after it and a bit of a dress-up, and he was probably, yeah, got the award for best on ground. I think he's a very funny <laughs> man, a leader of men, so there's plenty of laughter going on and plenty of good stories to come out of that. Very good. The off-field best on ground is uh, one of the most coveted awards going around at the footy club, of any footy club, if you ask me. So that's great to hear. Sam, it's been great chatting to you, great hearing about this premiership and all, all your memories 10 years on. Just before I let you go, is there any one thing that's standing out as a memory that we haven't discussed yet? Anything from the game or before the game or after the game? Any funny anecdote uh, that springs to mind? Oh, probably not off the top of my head. Everything's a little bit muddled after 10 years and we're lucky enough that we won, won a lot of those flags. So they sort of blend in together a little bit. So nothing off the top of my head to sort of give you a laugh to send me off. So apologies for that. But yeah, always when you're winning, you're never having a bad time. There's plenty of beer flowing and you can probably stuff around a little bit more than if you're not winning games. So I think we had a pretty good time throughout the whole, whole time. So yeah, just the whole whole four years is probably just something that's blended together and is really fondly remembered by myself and I'm sure all my teammates as well.
Hey, if you've got four years of great memories all muddled into one to the point where you can't even pick out one specific thing, I think that is uh, definitely a very good thing. So congratulations to you on uh, all, all that success through that era and hopefully uh, there's a big 10-year reunion to look forward to and hopefully that is a good time. It's been great chatting to you, Sam, and yes, enjoy the reunion celebrations this year. Will do. Thanks very much for having me, Dan.